Well, the world is moving swiftly towards adapting more ideas and technologies for climate change. In fact, numerous technologies received interest at this year's COP and climate tech continues to be the focus. But that also means we need more financing options available for such technologies. We have companies of funds which are supporting this initiative, the ones that are providing capital for climate. Since climate tech is in the spotlight, let's speak to one such leader in the space. Uh, Ms. Anjali Bansal, who is the founder of Avana Capital, is joining us now to make us understand the trends here. How do they really pick up with startups to invest in a lot more? And what is the outlook as far as climate startups and also the sustainability space is concerned? Ms. Bansal, thank you so much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18 to discuss something which is uh, in the limelight and very important as well. Uh, so uh, that really takes me to my first question because when we talk about funding a startup, one would look at growth potential, growth returns. But when, when we talk about sustainable investments or investment in climate tech, what do you exactly look at and how do you go about these decisions? What is the framework that you use and how big of an opportunity is climate tech industry? First of all, thank you very much to CNBC TV 18 for picking up this very, very important topic. And it's rightly called the climate clock because mm -hmm. the clock is ticking. We should have probably started working on this 20 years ago, but today is not too late. We have to start now. And in some ways, uh, we see sustainability and climate as actually the beginning of the next mega trend. So where digital was, say, 20 years ago, sustainability is today. Today, every single enterprise is digitalized. Every single enterprise function has digitalization embedded as a horizontal. Same thing has to be done for sustainability. Really, for the world as a whole, and certainly for India, to meet our climate action and sustainability goals, you know, COP27, COP28, all of the discussions are ranging around how to stop and solve for carbon and GHG, but more importantly, not just mitigation. So the way Avana looks at it is very similar to COP. We look at mitigation, adaptation, and resilience. So mitigation, of course, deals with carbon and GHG. Adaptation is helping uh, populations, societies, economies like ours make the transition and finance the transition. And then resilience is building resilience in our, again, vulnerable populations, agriculture, to withstand the effects of climate action. But underlying all of this is there needs to be adoption of climate technologies, so technologies solving for climate by large corporates. And that's where really Avana plays a role. We work with early stage startups that are solving for mitigation, adaptation, or resilience across three major verticals, energy transition, supply chain, and mobility, and climate resilient agriculture. And we work in an ecosystem approach, connecting startups to large corporates, working with policy and shaping the agenda for both our transition of the economy as well as society. Okay, all very important uh, focus areas as well. And of course, I'll touch uh, more upon this as well in this conversation. But I wanted to understand, since you are in this industry for so long and you have taken a step ahead, one of the first early uh, entrants as well, is the climate tech industry still underpenetrated when it comes to financing? Do you think there is not enough coming in from the private or the government sector? There is less availability right now and we need to pump in more money. Absolutely. It is underpenetrated. It is early days. It is still frontier technology in that sense. And it's the nascent stage of the evolution of the climate tech startup uh, ecosystem. I will break up financing actually into three pieces. One is there is enough financing available today for large scale energy projects. So utility scale solar, wind farms. Uh, government has announced actually a lot of policy support on this front as well. Uh, both in terms of the EV ecosystem, we have the national EV mission, we have the national uh, renewable mission, uh, PLI schemes announced for solar, uh, and a lot of global capital is available now for large scale energy transition. It is the other spaces which are still relatively underfinanced. Uh, I think we are fortunate in India to have a policy regime that is very supportive. We have a fair amount of sort of political consensus around the need for climate action. It is high on the national agenda. We see this on G20 and I'm part of the Startup 20 sustainability track and we are seeing the efforts being made on that front. But definitely, if we look at globally, about only 15% of investments went into climate tech. In India, it was even lower. It was 1.5%. But we are optimists. I think the trend is moving in the right direction. Literally, in the first half of 2022, the amount of investment that went into climate tech was greater than the previous four years combined. So I think it's a trend that is gaining steam now. Okay. Still early, 
but we are on the right track. Okay. A lot more capital needs to be attracted into this sector. That is heartening to know, especially the figure that you just mentioned, first half of 2022, much better or uh, higher than what we saw in the last four years. So let's talk about Avana now. You have made investments in well-known names like Iki Foods, Terra Do, 91. What kind of startups are you looking at right now? What's the kitty here? And especially right now when we are talking about this fall in startup valuations, globally, tech layoffs, a lot is happening. So, of course, valuations are something that we are looking at. Are you more cautious? Are valuations cheaper? What is the outlook? And what are you uh, generally seeing in the industry right now? So, at Avana, we back large market opportunities that will make a real dent in the climate problem. So even our three sectors of interest, right? So it is uh, energy transition, supply chain mobility, climate resilient ag, uh, account for about 90% of emissions. So it's a large problem statement. They also account for 70% of our economy and a large part of our population is employed in these spaces. So on the one hand, you have a big problem. On the other hand, you have a big market opportunity, right? So that's really what as an investor we want to look at. We look at, uh, first of all, business ideas that are solving a large problem. You mentioned Iki Foods, Iki is solving for food. So controlled growth environment, food production will do to food growing what assembly line in some ways did for manufacturing. Uh, uh, <coughs> Vector 91 or Alpha Vector is actually solving for sustainable mobility. Terra.do is building the glo largest global digital community for climate. So these are all category defining uh, unique IP technology led companies. So we look again for large companies that can become large businesses founders that are fearless and committed in their passion to solving for climate third we also look for a certain kind of business model which has fundamentally robust unit economics that are scalable and profitable at scale so when we put all of these three things together and ultimately it just comes down to the entrepreneur right so we look for great founders great entrepreneurial teams uh, turno is another such company that is creating the largest adoption ecosystem for electric vehicles by the underpenetrated small commercial vehicle operators. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we look for. Okay. Great founders solving a big problem with a frugal unit economics led mindset mm -hmm. and with something unique, whether it is technology IP or business model that is defensible. That is the need of the hour, right? Uh, you know, uh, Ms. Bansal, uh, during COP, the discussions were that the big fear, of course, is climate finance. We have been talking about it for years now. And the other big fear is that cost of funds for India, they are much costlier than what we see in developed markets. Right. Uh, do you think that will continue to be an issue? And uh, that is something that could put the financing point on a hold. Uh, how big is this climate finance issue that we are talking about? The climate finance is... Uh... I think it's it's very much front and center on the agenda. So I don't think there is a problem with putting it on the agenda. We just need to see more capital start to flow. There is a north-south dialogue that also needs to happen to bridge this gap. And we need all kinds of funding. We need the long-term patient capital for uh, lab stage science. A lot of this is science, right? So whether it's new battery chemistry, new battery technology, storage, uh, new ways of building and growing crops, so you need long-term patient capital, but you also need commercial equity capital of the type that we provide, that Avana is a commercial equity fund, um, to support these early stage companies as they start becoming enterprises. And then finally, you do need debt capital. Hmm. And as I had mentioned at the start of our discussion, large companies have access to uh, better preferential rates <clears throat> of financing. Small companies still have to struggle to get both equity and debt. And particularly, I think there is a need to create debt-like products uh, debt or debt-like products for startups in this space. We are hoping to see not just one Avana, but many funds like us that will come in with government support, with private sector support to help build these climate enterprises. More power to you and people who are actually working in this direction, right? So in that case, uh, since you're talking about government support as well, what do you think are the expectations or what would you like government to talk about when it comes to sustainability, climate change? They have been talking about it. Uh, we have seen a lot of policy change as well. Anything for climate startups uh, or uh, technology in this case? So there's a lot of support. I mean, I think our government amongst uh, many, many global governments is probably way in the front of supporting startups and innovation and recognizing that technology and innovation led startups are integral to solving for India's growth. I think we have a lot of government support, whether it is through Startup India and the Startup Mission, um, even Honorable Prime Minister, as he talks about Atmanir Bharata, we see the PLI schemes that are coming into manufacturing in this space. 
So fair amount of government support. Um, we saw in the last budget, uh, Honorable fi Finance Minister announced uh, thematic catalytic blended finance for frontier sectors like climate, agri, and so on. We hope to see in the new budget similarly um, further financial support. And uh, government capital helps to crowd in then private capital as well. We've got these catalytic funds that are being run as fund of funds that are government supported and perhaps something similar for climate, maybe an India Climate Action Fund. I am part of the Startup 20 sustainability track, and this is one of the things that we are going to talk about. Okay, so we'll track that, of course, budget in just a few days. So thank you so much for joining us and speaking about a whole host of issues from valuations to what kind of climate tech startups you are looking at and what is uh, your framework and the outlook going ahead as well. Thank you so much for joining us, Ms. Wansel. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for having me. All right, with that, we'll wrap on this edition of Climate Clock, but you stay tuned. All the climate action and the news updates you will get here.